Hi gardening friends, I'm Lark and I'm back with the last video of the year and I'm cutting down my garden. I'm using a sawzall on these thick root balls of the grass and it's working good. The rest of the garden I'm cutting down with a blade that's on our string trimmer and that's all done. That's called chop and drop major. I leave everything on the ground to decompose during the winter and spring. But this here works best, this sawzall, works best on these thick clump of grasses. My blade won't get through it without tangling up. And a chainsaw is out of the question, so sawzall is the best. I'd like to walk you through and show you what I'm doing for the autumn. So the sawzall has several clumps I have to do uh, throughout the garden. That's going to take me a while. What else I've been doing in the garden is sheet mulching. And I do that around perennials that I want to not get choked out by aggressive uh, other perennials. Now this is a hibiscus here. And it's being invaded by bee balm and geranium and some of the aggressive plants, fever few. So what I do, come in, can you see the cardboard? Come in close here. And I laid cardboard down around the plant about, what, 10 inches. And then I covered it with grass clippings. That way in spring, none of that reseeds or the roots of other perennials are going to go around this plant. So I did that around hibiscus. I did it around some of my daylilies, another hibiscus, and a few things I leave up and I leave chicken wire around them. So it reminds me in spring that they are in this place. This is the balloon flower and I left it up tall so I won't forget where it is. Now I will cut it down just to about a foot or so. And it'll stay that way till spring because a balloon flower is late to emerge too and I don't want to be stepping on it. Again, I did sheet mulching and grass clippings around it. Another clump of grass I have to do. Show them all the debris. See everything that chopped and dropped, it looks so messy, but it will decompose. And in spring, it still doesn't look real good, but if you go back to my video around June, it starts just filling in with plants and you don't even see the chop and drop. Oh, what else? I talked about the, um, I talked about the, um, let's see, what do we call that thing? Hydrangea. I'm trying to hide the trailer. This is only one year old. Next year, taller, and we will not see the trailer. A great filler, a great filler, and very hardy. That is the Annabelle. Oh. You haven't seen me because I'm getting tired. I'm not working as much in the garden. And we're trying to make this yard, my husband and I are trying to make this yard more manageable for us. So the chop and drop is helping me a lot. I don't, I'm trying not to get uh, overwhelmed by the work. Oh, so pretty. So pretty young. It's probably only about 50 degrees this morning. The new area under the limbed up pines I had talked about. Show them the new hostas, honey. The new hostas will be better next year. And I put them in a S form right under this uh, limbed up pines, blue spruces. All aggressive plants in here. Fever few, Jacob's Ladder, uh, Bee Bomb. 
What else is in there? Oh, celandine poppy for early color, like around, oh, probably me. So the veggie garden is done. Pretty, pretty done. We've had a frost. It has not hit the peas, but they're not going to produce anymore. Not much at all. There's a few flowers on. So this garden I'm going to work on today. My peppers did not get hit by a frost. The plants did, but not the peppers. I have a few. Um, these are what Italian roasters. I have uh, yellow bells here. Come over here, hon. Yellow bell. I'm trying to have it uh, ripen. We'll see. Between the next couple days, these will probably get all picked because now when Dave cuts the grass, I am doing the lasagna method of, um, of layering mulch and then it decomposes and builds great soil. I have this clear toad out here because I put it over my lettuce at night. So it helps that the frost doesn't hit it. It'll take some cold, but it's thin leafed, unlike the Swiss chard and the kale. They'll last a little longer. So Dave is dropping grass clippings for me and, and leaves. And I am taking my kitchen scraps and this will get buried. I keep the shovel. I'm working this way, so I have to bury this today. And I'm doing that instead of uh, a compost pile. I am either digging it right into the ground or close to a plant, but not next to it. I still have carrots in there. Garlic is planted, all in here, all my garlic. And I have chicken wire over it, so the squirrels don't dig in there. So I'm going to take the camera from Dave so he can carry on doing what he's doing, some of the winter or fall cleanup. Thanks, honey. I am working on raspberries, cutting out the old canes and leaving the younger ones. There's a lot of older canes in there and I don't have the heart to cut them all down. We'll see what they look like in spring. So again, I am uh, putting grass clippings and leaves. I will be getting some uh, coffee grounds. I am harvesting some of the nasturtiums yet and of course all the kale. Calendula has had it. I could still harvest some of the flowers. So what I do here, let's see if I can find a ripe, uh, yeah, here. This is feverfew. Feverfew, pretty white flower. You see the pretty white flower? Okay, I take the seeds and I, I'm separating them. And I want white in here with the calendula next year. Because this calendula is self-seeding, so I'm going to have calendula coming up here. And I want feverfew in here too. So I just drop the seed and it will come again. And of course amaranth will. It's a little tall for it here. Uh, I cut this down a couple times so it blooms shorter. But I don't want it to shade out the veggie garden. Not much sun on this part of the garden this time of the year. This is the west side of my house. And let's see, it is probably only about 10 feet away from the house. It, not even that. So this time of the year, not bad. Not bad because I don't need the sun. The kale in it is on the outside edge, so it gets probably about five hours of sun. Lavender is still doing great, and that's in a hole of the concrete block. My succulents. Oh. <gasps> These are hens and chicks, uh, which are, are uh, hardy in Wisconsin, and they will winter. 
but this here, this flapjack cactus and the pencil cactus, oh no, I'm trying to find somebody who wants to take it. They can't have my little bike, but I will dig out the uh, calicoe, I think that is. I'm not sure, but it's a flapjack. That's what I call it. Comfrey. I need to dig some of the root out too. I dried some leaves, but I gotta uh, dig the root. And scrub it a little and then dry it. I probably won't scrub it. I'll probably just wipe the dirt off. And we'll see how dirty it is when I need it. Cause I'm only using it topically. In fact, today I um, put a, a comfrey poultice on my left foot. I always have trouble with my left foot pain on top. I had a big heavy cart. You remember when I was doing the um, hmm, rolling shelf greenhouse way back on maybe eight years ago. It's your rolling shelf greenhouse. And I, Dave and I were putting it in the garage one night and up over the lip of the garage floor. He pushed it and I was on the other side and it went up on my foot. So I had a couple hundred pounds on my foot. Nothing broke, but it's been sore ever since, a number of years. So I do comfrey every so often. Comforting comfrey. Now the blade, look at all the chop and drop, okay? The blade, I don't like getting close to the blue bottle path, so I will come with a, a pruner and a scissors and clean up the edges. Today we get the tall ladder out and I cut back the trumpet vine. We're winding down and I feel better now that the garden is cut down. That one big thing is out of the way. And Jane, no, I'm not taking classes every day. I just don't want to do YouTube so much anymore. I, I find that I might, you know, I don't want boring videos. So if I can just do them once in a while and talk to you guys, that's great. Okay? Probably see you in winter a couple times and show you how pretty it is back here in winter. The bog garden next year probably won't be heavily planted with veggies, even leftover veggies. I have more than enough food, so I think this might be pumpkins next year. So this will be cleaned up. I have some young kale in here for later harvest. I am not covering this up, so however long it takes the cold. Little broccoli I'm still harvesting, and of course the leaves I always harvest. Some of the uh, onions, different stages. Those are the newest ones. Then I have more parsley down here, and some more green onions that are older. And then my oldest green onions are over there in a pot. I'll show you. So the kale, little kales, and we'll see if this even amounts to anything. The litter, littlest kale. Celery, not real. It looks healthy, doesn't it? Looks very healthy. But um, some of the stems are really hollow. Let's look at this one. Oh, this isn't bad. Let me. Mm, this one's not bad. I had celery up on top. Over in the West Garden, not real good. This one here will be okay. Good enough to chop up for soup. But this one here probably did better because it's continually moist in here. And this year it was really moist because we had so much rain. Comfrey. This comfrey will be cut down and put on the ground on that veggie bed where the celery is because I'll probably plant pumpkins there next year or I'll just put it in a wheelbarrow and haul it up to the west veggie garden. My blueberries. 
Let's see how much time, time I have left here. Oh, I have some time. My blueberries, they're doing pretty good. Got a few handfuls of blueberries. Some hybrid, they're not really hybrid. They're just loving living there, the dandelions. Those are my greens. Just had them this morning with my eggs and kale and what else I put in there? Some Japanese mustard. And I fry my eggs and put it over the cooked greens. Beet greens I had. Some of my green onions yet. And these carrots now, I don't know. I might cover this with a hoop. I just might. We'll see how time plays out for me. Lots of work. I'd say today's a good day that I'm thinking of. We have a couple more years in this house. Sure hope somebody buys it that loves gardening. If not, oh well. My journey will take me to three-stage living, senior living. And you know, I think I'm going to continue videos when I go there and hopefully show you what seniors can do in senior living. And I hope they cooperate with me. I'd love to be able to have a raised bed garden using cinder blocks and doing the lasagna method and the chop and drop. And I like to promote more senior living places having an area ever so small that people that are capable can do some gardening and the place we're go we're going three pillars it's a masonic establishment i uh, they do have gardening area for the people so that's very cool it just needs to be relocated not enough sun and it's a wooded area so my friends this is it for the fall season I don't think you're gonna see me again but I'll be watching your videos and I will be painting I told you I was taking up watercolor and of course it doesn't look like much but I'm enjoying it getting to uh, show a different artistic side of me and I'm having fun while I do it and if it looks better and better each time I'll be happy so take care of my gardening friends thank you for liking my tea time Tuesdays I don't do many how to's anymore you can learn from a lot of other people the how-to's, but I can share and walk with you through my garden. Take care, and I do appreciate you visiting me. Bye-bye. Maybe I'll see you when the snow flies here in my Wisconsin Zone 5 garden. Bye-bye.